Hey, I'm Alec from Matter Hackers, and today I'm going to show you how to succeed with ABS. Currently, ABS is the second most common 3D printing filament, following closely behind PLA. ABS is so common because of how versatile and prevalent it is in your day-to-day -day life. In fact, most consumer plastics are made from ABS, like Lego or other toys. They're all made from ABS. Now, if you've never printed with ABS and have only ever printed with PLA, you're going to find that it's a bit different in how it works. A lot of the techniques between how to succeed with the PLA and how to succeed with ABS are the same. So the two guides are going to sound a little familiar, but there's some key points that are different between the two. ABS is prone to warping and splitting and being all around just a tough material to jump into. So with this guide, we're going to show you some tips and techniques for how to turn your ABS prints into some amazing finished products. The first tip is to make sure your first layer is right. Now, different printers have different techniques for actually leveling the beds, so your technique, you may need to adjust according to that. For most printers, it's something like either three screws or four screws on the corners of the bed or two in the front and one in the back. And all you have to do is move the nozzle over the screw, take a slip of paper and put it underneath the nozzle, and then gently turn the screw until there's a very slight resistance between the nozzle, the paper, and the bed. From there, you're going to gently pull on it until you get a right amount of resistance, and then move the nozzle to each point. Once the resistance is about the same on all of them, you're good to go. The point isn't to get super tight on all of them or super loose, just a consistent level across all of them. From there, you can go in your slicer and adjust the Z offset if you find that starting a print is too close, or you can try and mess with it while it's printing the skirt and adjust the screws at that point. That's what I personally do. You can use whatever technique you find works best for you. Other printers automatically level the bed. So something like the Lulzbot Taz 6 or the Oldsmaker 3, those have their techniques for leveling the bed and with that, you don't have to worry about anything. Just watch it when it starts, make sure it adheres to the bed and you're good to go. You can also software level any printer by using matter control. Within Matter Control, there's a leveling feature where you can pick three points on the bed and it'll walk you through the steps to level it. It's basically the same process as if you were turning the screws, but with this, even if your bed is at a full angle, it'll be able to adjust for that and print on that angle the entire time. So those are just some different techniques for how to level the bed, but follow the instructions that came with your printer because each printer does have its own set of rules. Now that the bed is level, you need to actually make sure that the nozzle is at the correct distance from the bed. To do that, all you need to do is watch as the skirt is laid out. Are the lines super close to each other and actually lifting each other apart? Do your nozzles too close? Are the lines far enough apart where you can see a distinction between each pass? Do your nozzles too far? And these are things that you'll gain and learn as you print, but to start off, just make sure that the lines are just a little squished into each other, but not smearing out the sides as the nozzle passes by. You can also use matter control to baby step your Z offset, so it will move the nozzle in small increments away from the bed or closer to the bed if you find that it wasn't tuned right when you turn the screws. In that case, all you have to do is just gently move the nozzle up or down in 0.02 millimeter increments until you find that the bed adhesion is at the right level. Tip number two, bed adhesion and print bed surfaces. Now, each printer has its own print bed surface, either glass or PEI on glass, aluminum, build tack. There's so many different combinations for print beds, but let's talk a little more in depth about how to actually succeed depending on the material. If you don't have a heated bed, sorry, ABS isn't for you. ABS is very prone to warping, and if the bed isn't near 110 Celsius, it's just not gonna work. Your part's gonna warp away, it's gonna smear, and you're gonna end up with a block of ABS around your nozzle, so let's avoid that. If you do have a heated bed, here's what you can do. You're gonna need some sort of build plate adhesion. So whether that's hairspray on glass, or you use build tack, or you use PEI with a tiny bit of hairspray, or aluminum, whatever you have, you need something to hold the print down. We find that Aquanet Extra Hold works best on glass, but we've heard plenty of success using PEI on the bed, or build tech, or straight aluminum. The point is to just have 110 degrees Celsius on the bed, and that will really stick your part on. To increase your chances of a successful print, you can also add a brim. I like to use 15 lines around the base of the print, like this Bulbasaur planter. It's got a brim going around it, and what that does is it gives it more adhesion to the bed and further out. So if you have a tall part, if you have a wide base, Either way, a brim helps to really cement your print down while you're printing, and it'll still pop off pretty easily when you're done since it's only one layer thick. If you're printing on glass and you don't want to spray hairspray all on the inside of your printer, and you don't trust that you can keep it controlled enough, 
You can also make ABS juice, which we have a video on about how to make it or slurry or all the different forms of ABS mixed with acetone. You can also use Kapton tape on your bed with some hairspray on top of that. What the Kapton tape does is it helps disperse the heat from your build plate so that even the edges and the corners can heat up. Tip number three, calibrating your print temperature. For ABS, I generally print at 235 degrees Celsius for the print head and 110 degrees Celsius for the bed. Now, I don't stray too far from 110 for the bed, but depending on the brand, the color, and all the different additives in the filament, I may go as high as 250 or as low as 220. It's something that you'll need to calibrate by printing small calibration prints of either retraction testing or print benchy. Find something that works for you to calibrate and to see what temperature works best for that filament. Tip number four, how to change filament. One of the earliest mistakes I made when 3D printing was changing filament. I thought that I could just pull the filament out, put the new one in, and be done with it. But what I actually need to do is make sure that the temperature of the filament is hot enough for it to be able to come out of the nozzle. Because what happens is it melts and then cools in the nozzle and forms a plug. So what you gotta do is heat up the nozzle, disengage the retention on the extruder, which can either be done with a lever on some printers or some other system that needs to be disengaged. But what you do is you heat it up to a normal printing temperature, pull it out, put the new one in, re-engage the extruder, and you can start printing. Now if you're trying to avoid color mixing, what you can do is set the extruder to 90 Celsius, gently pull on the filament, and then turn up the heat to about 150. And at some point, you're gonna feel the filament give, and you can yank it out, pulling out all the old gunk, and have a nice clean extrusion when you put in the new filament. Tip number five, enclosures. Now, even if you followed all the other tips, you still may be having trouble with your prints. An enclosure will help with that. This part was printed without an enclosure, but this one was printed with one. They both have the exact same settings. The only difference is I put the enclosures that we built in a previous video over the printer, and I got rid of all the splitting, I got rid of the warping. In fact, this one, I could probably crush this in my hand, but this one came out near perfect. Having an enclosure over your printer, even if it's something as simple as just a trash bag over it, or if you build an enclosure like in our other video, which we made for a little spot Taz 6, either of those will work. You just want to keep the heat in and drafty air out. Tip number six, be sure to regularly clean your extruder gear. There's a small gear inside your extruder, and that gear presses up against your filament and pushes it through using the small teeth on it. Now if the tension is too tight, it really chews up that filament and then it fails to extrude. Or if it's just being regularly used, it fills up a little bit and you need to clean it out. The easiest thing to do is to use a toothbrush or a small wire brush, brush out the gears as you're turning it to make sure it's all clean. And once that's done, it's good to go for another couple months. The thing is to just make sure that when you see it's getting dirty or you see that there's filament dust all in the extruder, just clean it out as a refresher and a general maintenance thing. If you aren't able to extrude at all, your nozzle may be clogged. And in that case, we have another video on how to unclog your nozzle. So be sure to check that out, add that to your knowledge base for when it happens, because it will happen. If it happens to me, it happens to the best of us. It's just part of 3D printing. And that's it. It's a lot of information to process, but altogether, you should have something to work from in order to start printing ABS and to start printing ABS successfully. I'm Alex from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos. And don't forget, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.